Thank you both for meeting with me today. I'm really excited to dive fertility journey and also how Popstar came to be. Um, I'd love to hear about your infertility and IVF journey. My name is Brian Steichstrom. I'm one of the co-founders of Popstar. I am a practicing urologist, sexual medicine expert. My wife, Chrissy, I think we have a story that's very similar to a lot of couples out there in that we tried naturally to have kids and weren't successful. And we decided to go through IVF. We did ICSI, uh, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, and we thought it would be easy. It was anything but easy. And after a pretty dramatic first introduction to IVF, we had a failure. I think it changed the way we looked at how we were approaching things. We were lucky in the sense that we had access to doctors that I knew. I don't think we realized the roller coaster that it would be. And so after that first failure, I think we really started to look and see exactly what we could do as a couple, um, as a doctor, both and as individuals, to sort of maximizes our chances of success. We started focusing on our health and things that we could control in the process. You know, the medical part of things is all in their hands. And while you're hopeful, you also start looking at what can I be controlling with my diet, my stress level, my sleep patterns. We started, you know, limiting things like caffeine and alcohol. There are so many things you learn throughout the process too. If you could go back and tell yourself something, what would you would have wanted to know sooner? The hard question. I think the most important thing that I would want to tell myself is that if you keep trying, if you do everything right, there's always options in front of you, right? Because I, I see patients go through this, I saw us go through this, and I see friends go through this. And whether or not conceiving a baby naturally doesn't work, then there's in vitro fertilization. And there's many types of in vitro fertilization. If one doesn't work, there's other ones. And then even beyond in vitro fertilization, there's adoption that no matter what, we would be successful in having the family we wanted. And so it kind of kept in focus that what was important was having a family to us and we were gonna do it. Being positive and supportive of each other in that journey and knowing that we could be successful, things yeah. are gonna go the way they go for a reason and just stay on course as best you can. Yeah, trust the process while also doing what you can on a personal level to positively impact your health. Your mental health is so important in this journey and I don't think that that's something that's spoken about very often. Figuring out ways to manage your stress levels. There aren't a lot of resources that I found when I was going through it. I mean, this has been seven years now. Let's dive into Popstar. Tell me how that came to be. You know, in the whole process of going through IVF, on the guy's side or the male side, I felt like there was not a lot to do, right? And so I was watching my wife go to appointments get labs. And I mean, sometimes the labs were like once a week or every three days, it was a lot of labs, a lot of appointments, a lot of ultrasounds, a lot of injections. I work a lot. And so she was home doing the shots herself. And so I always felt that there was an imbalance of the amount of work going into it. We know that 30% of infertility cases are related to the male, 50% female, another 20% overlap and have both components. And so I knew there was at least a 50% chance that I was contributing to this. But in speaking to experts, speaking to colleagues and friends as a practicing urologist, I know a lot of the male factor infertility guys around the country. There wasn't a lot of consistent evidence as to what I should be doing, right? So they were saying the things that we all know, like, eat healthy, exercise, get rest, don't drink, don't smoke. But there wasn't a lot of active involvement in things that I could do. And so I was asking a lot of questions about supplements, diet, and the the responses that I were getting were inconsistent. After we were finally done, I reached out to a friend of mine, Josh Gonzalez, another urologist and sexual health doctor, and he was having other issues with men who were having semen health issues. And so we put our minds together and decided to put, put together what we consider to be a fun, positive male semen health supplement. And that's the origins of how Popstar started. So what makes you different from other companies out there selling sperm health supplements? I wanted something that I knew was safe to put in my body, didn't have any extra fillers or unnecessary ingredients. And I also wanted to know the quality of those ingredients were going to be safe and also work. And so we spent a lot of time researching exactly what was necessary. We scoured the male factor in fertility literature. We spoke to the experts. We looked at the biologic science. And then after we knew exactly what we wanted to put into Popstar in order to maximize success, we then made sure we did it the right way. 
So I wanted to make sure we were using the highest level ingredients. All of them are vegan, fair trade, non-GMO, organic. It was an expensive process to figure out, but I knew that if I was gonna be taking this for semen health, and the goal here was to conceive a baby, that I needed to be putting the best ingredients that are the best source in my body. And so Popstar is a very unique doctor formulated blend of ingredients designed to maximize sperm health, maximize semen volume, so that men have the best chance at conceiving. And we tried to make it fun as well, right? So we tried to make it cool. We tried to make it not feel like I was buying some scientific -y, you know, labeled bottle. And it was, it just felt chemically, chemically, if, if that's even a word. And so what we wanted to do was make it fun. And so Popstar, we tried to sort of empower men to recognize that this can be cool. This can be active and that you and your partner can enjoy the process as much as possible. Completely agree. There's so many layers of grief um, that infertility brings and it's important to address that and know that everyone's journey is different and what works for one person might not necessarily work for the next and that's okay too. But doing what feels right in that moment is essential, especially if you want to keep going. Um, but yeah, no, breaks are something that a lot of people struggle with. They feel like, you know, it is it is a marathon, not a sprint for one, as you mentioned. Um, and so many people obviously want to get to that finish line as soon as possible, but it's all about endurance in this case and using tools and tips along the way and doing what you have to do. Yeah, we agree. We, we, we... Everything's so available to us nowadays, right? You can get everything instantaneously on your phone. You can get food delivered to your house. You can get information immediately on your computer. And we have this immediacy where we want things done. And IVS is a, IVF is a humbling journey because there is not an immediacy to it. it. Even if you try and rush it, you can't. And so we agree. And I, and I think it's important to say that you, maybe you shouldn't rush it. And, and maybe you should take your time and do the steps that are necessary focus on yourself, focus on your partner, focus on your doctors, do everything the right way and with a normal pace so that you maximize your chance for success. Yeah, no, completely. Another area that a lot of people would love tips on is how to advocate for yourself in the doctor's office. It's something a lot of patients feel silly about asking certain questions or just scared overall to possibly bring something up, but any words of advice there would be very appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the most important thing is to always recognize that it's your body and there are no questions that shouldn't be asked. And there's no opinions or beliefs or ideas that shouldn't be expressed to your physician, right? You should be confident in advocating for yourself. I also think it's important to go to these visits with someone else, whether or not it's your partner or a friend or a family member, to have a support network there. That's someone who can advocate for you. That's someone who can ask questions for you. And a second set of ears is critical to making sure you're taking it all in. When I see patients, we deliver a lot of information. And when I sat there in our IVF appointments, someone who's a physician in the infertility space, even I was struggling to process because the first amount of information that came out of our doctor's mouth, I was trying to think about how that mattered and I missed the next two to five things that they said. And so it is important to advocate for yourself. It's also important to make sure you're in the hands of a specialist, right? There are doctors who focus in IVF and there are doctors who do not. And so finding someone who specializes in IVF is actually critical in this process. And so knowing you're in the hands of someone who you trust and have a good relationship with is actually very important.